The reading is taken from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. A good sign of what we truly long for is what we're prepared to endure in the hope of achieving it. Parents, or let's be honest, more precisely mothers, will only be too aware of this. I can't even begin to imagine how women endure the pain of childbirth. But the joy of welcoming new life into the world is obviously ultimately worth it, as even the sleepless nights, dirty nappies, the constant worry doesn't seem to stop countless couples deciding, you know what, let's do that again. My tests of personal endurance are much more trivial. It's been a while since I've done any running, but for a few years, I was inspired by Mo Farah to get out there and pound roads. For me, it tended to work best if I had a specific goal in sight, a 10k here, a half marathon there. Because although I quite liked the sense of achievement after the run, I normally quite enjoyed the run itself, the thought of getting off the sofa on a cold, wet, windy Tuesday evening was often quite daunting. Close to where I live is a road called Sudbury Hill. And Sudbury Hill was a real killer. Firstly, to get there, I would have to go along another road, which was long, straight. It was exceptionally boring to run along. Very, very seamy. With a slow incline. And then you turn on to the hill itself. It was about a mile long pretty much solidly uphill, really quite steep in places. There were all sorts of twists and turns and bends in the road. And no matter how often I did it, my mind would still play the same trick on me. I would think, surely I must be getting close to the top now. And then I'd reach another band to find yet another climb waiting for me, even worse than the last one. And my mind would groan and want to give up. And pretty much every part of my body would be thinking, yep, that's the first sensible suggestion you've made since deciding to include Sudbury Hill on today's route. But if I stuck at it, if I endured that as part of the training, not only did it help me become more prepared come race day, I noticed that one area where I was stronger than a lot of other runners, even runners who were much better than me, was on the inclines. It's a truth of life that most of our significant growth comes through adversity. Stuff that doesn't, or stuff that comes easily, doesn't really teach us an awful lot. But that of itself doesn't make adversity good. But some adversity is a lot worse than my battles with Sudbury Hill. 
Many often go through circumstances way beyond their control and go through trials and I can eat far greater than I can even begin to contemplate. And some willingly face the kind of dangers that I can't even begin to fathom. And by itself, adversity would probably achieve little more than to cause us to slide into despair. But if we're to break through adversity into the growth, I think we need something else. We need hope. The hope that something better lies beyond the endurance. So that's what keeps us going. That this isn't all going to somehow be pointless. Because life isn't easy. And the life of faith isn't easy. That was true of the people to whom Peter was writing in our reading today. Peter wrote about them being shielded, but that doesn't mean that they had nothing to endure. He speaks of them enduring grief in all sorts of trials. And it would be lovely to be able to say that faith keeps trouble from coming to our doors. But I can't say it because it simply isn't true. And we know it isn't true. And Jesus himself said, the same rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. If anything, faith can add a different dimension to the struggles of life. Because sometimes people struggle not despite their faith, but because of it. In many parts of our world, people don't enjoy religious freedom. And for others, it can feel like trying to do the right thing just doesn't seem to bear fruit. People who treat others really badly seem to do quite well and not sort of give their actions a second thought. Whereas people who try to do right just get nowhere. And the Bible doesn't run from that. If you read the Psalms, whole chunks of the religious songs of the time that the, or the hymn book that Jesus used, if you like, are given over to it. And Jesus doesn't run from it. He not only faced opposition for being true to what God wanted of him, he told those who followed them that they would face the same. He said, in the world you will have trouble. But he added, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That is central to what we are celebrating at Advent. A baby's cry in a Bethlehemite house is the first sign of a new kingdom. In the first coming of Jesus, the world indeed turns a corner. But not everything changes with that first cry. That first flicker of light is very vulnerable. One of the reasons why in the Northern Hemisphere we mark this season when we do is because it crosses over the darkest part of our year. As Christmas arrives, the ever encroaching darkness gives way to a gradual increase of light. And at Advent we're reminded that although we struggle for a season, our world has turned a corner. We may face trial and trouble, but God's ultimate victory has been sealed and assured. We will still face darkness, but the morning will come. For a time, the hill, like Sudbury Hill, may seem never ending. But there will come a time when we take the bend, and it will have been conquered. The birth pangs will give way to new life. And the inheritance and joy 
and awaits us. It's untouchable, indestructible and assured. Jesus never promised it would be easy. But he did promise it would be worth it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your world awaits you. In the longing of the persecuted for justice. In the longing of the poor for prosperity. In the longing of the privileged for riches greater than wealth. In the longing of our hearts for a better life. And in the song of your church, expectation is ever present. O oh, come, Lord, desire behind our greatest needs. O oh, come, Lord, liberator of humanity. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel.